Hello friends, this video on alternating currents part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction AC voltage applied to a resistor AC voltage applied to an inductor AC voltage applied to a capacitor LCR circuit Resonant frequency LC oscillations and transformer So far, whenever we talked about current, we talked only about direct current or DC, right? So here in this lesson, we will talk about a new type of current that is alternating current. So we will see what this alternating current is. And there are so many applications of alternating current, which we see around ourselves in our day to day life. Some of those applications are your radio, the television, refrigerator or maybe the transformers which you see uh, I mean which supply power to all of your houses even in your cars and so and so forth so we will come back to this introduction slide as always after we go through the entire lesson and we know what is alternating current and how do we implement alternating current in each of these applications right so let us see what is an alternating current so when we spoke about direct current, what it was, it was nothing but flow of electrons, right? So what do you think should be alternating current? Because we define that current is nothing but flow of electrons. So even in alternating current, it should be nothing else but flow of electrons. So how should it differ from your direct current? So we will see that in detail in this slide. Well, we'll define alternating current as a current that varies like a sine function with time. That sounds surprising, right? That how can the current vary like a sine function with time? That is, it would vary in magnitude, it will reach a maximum value, again come down to zero and go back and reach a negative value. That means it will swing or it will oscillate between a positive or a maximum value and a minimum value. So how are the electrons flowing that it is constituting a current of this kind? So we will see that. So when I talk about DC, what do I mean? I mean a circuit somewhat like this. Let us suppose this is some battery source, right? And here I have, so what happens when I, uh, when we think of a DC current? It, it is something like this. Let us suppose you have a circuit with a bulb. And from this is a DC power supply, right? So when I say that this bulb is glowing, when you switch on the circuit, current flows through the circuit and this bulb glows. So what do I mean when I say that current flows through this circuit? That means we say that electrons are traveling through this circuit like this and they are coming back again like this. Right. So that means when I talk about direct current, it is like the electro all the electrons are moving along a particular direction. That means they are moving along a along one direction. For example, here it is anti-clockwise direction. So sometimes it is a clockwise direction, but it is like the electron will flow in one particular direction. But when I talk about an alternating current, it is something like if I say that elect alternating current is flowing through a wire, that means the electrons are not flowing in one direction. The name itself is saying, right, direct means it is straight and direct. Alternating means something is happening alternately. So al in alternating current, the electrons are moving back and forth. Sounds interesting, right? So something like this, let us suppose if you have a circuit again and now you don't have a DC power supply, instead you have an AC power supply. Now if I say that alternating current is flowing through the circuit, that means let us suppose there is one electron here, this electron will move like this, like this, like this, like this. So that means it will just oscillate about its position. Similarly, all the electrons will move back and forth, back and forth. So that means 
once for some time it is moving in the clockwise direction again it is coming back to anti clockwise again clockwise again anti clockwise again clockwise again anti clockwise now why the electrons are moving like that or what causes the electrons to move like that we will see that in the next slide but for now you try to understand how do electrons flow in case of a dc current and in case of an ac current right so since the electrons move back and forth back and forth that is why this is how we get an alternating current it is moving in the clockwise again anti clockwise again clockwise again anti clockwise so like that you get, get a curve like this for alternating current so we say that this your y axis gives you the direction of the current and your x axis gives you nothing but the with time it gives you time so we say that now another important parameter when i talk about alternating current is the frequency of alternating current that means how frequently the electron is changing its direction for example there is one electron here let us suppose this is one electron so now this electron is going clockwise uh, anti clockwise coming back again going again coming back again going again coming back so how fast the electron is changing its direction that is defined by the frequency right so if i say that the frequency is uh, 20 hertz that means the no, the electron is moving back and forth 20 times in a second right so this uh, frequency will basically define that how fast the electrons are oscillating right so along x axis we take omega t what is omega omega is nothing but your angular frequency right so this plot gives you the variation of alternating current with time right so how do we define and so like how we have a dc current so along with for dc current there is a corresponding dc voltage right which gives rise to dc current similarly when i talk about alternating current there is a, a corresponding alternating voltage because alternating voltage is the one which drives the alternating current so how do i express alternating current or alternating voltage we define alternating current as i is equal to i m sin omega t as i told it the if you look at this graph it varies like a sine function right and it varies between two points this is the maximum value which is often known as the peak value so basically this current is varying between these two points so we call this peak value as im so this im is nothing but the peak value of alternating current so the because like when i talk about dc current i can say that okay the current is 2 amperes 2 amperes means the current is 2 amperes everywhere right because the current doesn't change its magnitude but when i talk about ac current i cannot give a specific magnitude that okay current is 2 amperes if i say 2 amperes you need to tell it is 2 amperes at which instant of time because if you look at this the current is changing its magnitude at every instant of time right so you just cannot specify current with a particular magnitude because current is changing its magnitude continuously so we have something called peak value of current which will tell that okay current is changing its magnitude with time but it will vary between these two values it cannot go beyond this so like how, in case of dc current you just have one current value in case of ac current there are a couple of terminologies which together define the amount of current for example we have something called peak value of current similarly we have something called rms current similarly we have something called average current so we will forget all of, all of them now we will talk about them in in their respective slides so for now you just focus on what is being dealt in this slide so this says that we define so this is how we express an alternating current similarly we express alternating voltage as v is equal to vm sin omega t where vm is the peak value of the voltage 
right so i hope that now you know what is alternating current at least you have understood what is alternating current it is a current which changes its magnitude with time and also it reverses its direction that means first it flows clockwise then anti clockwise clockwise anti clockwise right a very important parameter when we talk about alternating current is the frequency at which the electron changes its direction right and uh, the plot or uh, the current function with respect to time uh, resembles the sine function so we express the alternating current as i is equal to i m sin omega t and alternating voltage as v is equal to v m sin omega t right thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thank you once again